I am, for my methodology, I'm using um, mi like a mixed approach. I'm very concerned with um, oral testimony and oral history, and I realised um, during my undergraduate studies that um, it could be very... I was sitting in the library and I was like, well, how can I reach all of these people? Because they're not affiliated with institutions. You can't just show up somewhere. They're, you know, it's families, they're dispersed, and some are members of support groups, some aren't. And then I was on Facebook one day and a thing popped up from a friend saying, why don't you try this support group, which was on Facebook. And I realised that there's huge amounts of networking that go on um, in home education communities through the internet. So I started networking using um, Twitter, Facebook um, and Yahoo groups and also using it to collect data through using um, through using like Skype interviews and MSN so that people don't have to travel because obviously you can't just go to one place and find everyone there. Um, I, in terms of this aspect of agency, I was particularly influenced by um, some, um, some of the literature. So Holt, um, present, John Holt presents <coughs> an expansion in the number of families who are home educating and schooling at home as consequence upon changing popular attitudes whereby the high estimation of civic education and institutional schooling as providing social <coughs> group was replaced with the opinion that people not only have the right to believe what they want, but they also have the right to pass on their beliefs to their children. Um, similarly, Marshall and Vale suggest that electing to provide education through the home signifies a parental assertion of responsibility for their child's education and he saw that the parents of the 1990s were believing that they were the legitimate agents for determining what is harmful and desirable for the child. Um, it's, it's widely recognised and I think you know, popularly recognised that um, such home provision is dependent on a belief that the parent has the right to decide how their child will be educated and a right to control the types of socialisation experiences as well. Um, so um, in the course of the work, I've, I've also come across, um, diff you know, people have responded to me from different countries, and so in Germany there are home educators, but they're underground because it's illegal, and similarly in some Asian countries, um, <coughs> and then and different states deal with the home education differently. Um, so, for example, so one thing that I found is that there's been a rise in the number of home educating families, and this, and I've been trying to look at what what might have caused this, and whether there's changing attitudes. It seems that those that were involved in the 1960s were very much um, motivated by strong philosophical convictions, and more recent home educators haven't had s such, you know, often this philosophical drive isn't there so much, but they're just described by um, Mike Fortunewood as reluctant educational heretics, where they, where they feel that they've been let down by the schooling provision. Um, and the official provision. Um, and I've also been looking at how public attitudes are perceived to have changed by home educating families. So um, one claimed, perceptions of homeschooling have improved. It's no longer seen as wrong or freakish. Homeschoolers used to be stereotyped as new age hippies, Bible bashers or hothouses. Now it's seen positively and more mainstream. Most people accept it. Um, and I felt that that, that that quote really, yeah, really summed up this, this change. Um, another claimed, over the last 30 years, there's been increasing numbers who felt failed by school and so, and so felt that they needed to take on the role themselves. Um, and another more recently claimed, we want to instill our, our own values on our children and protect them from the negative moral environment found at school. Um, there's... I've also been looking at the contextual changes and the practical um, ability to home educate and some have said things like they find it harder, that they believe that parents find it harder now to rely on one income in an increasingly, uh, you know, in a society that increasingly does expect you to have two incomes. Um, and also I've seen the growth of support groups um, and networking for home educators. So with, as, support gr as support groups grow, people feel more enabled to home educate their children and also more aware of it as a possibility. So that's what you see in the internal yellow triangle, whereby the, popula the popularity of educating at home 
um, leads to as it becomes more popular, there are more people to engage in support networks and in uh, support networks, and there's an increased kind of community resource. Um, and then that impacts on public awareness and acceptability. So when people are engaged in those support groups, often they will engage in media interaction and such, and then more people know about it. And then that increases the popularity again, brings more and more people in. Um, and the external triad, there's, um, I look at practical ability. So that's ability from outside, so things like legal ability, financial and educational resources. Um, as well as a lack of appropriate alternative provision, some people turn to home education sort of out of, out, you know, out of necessity, um, either because they feel that they've been failed by school, um, or because they live in rural areas, or the child's ill, um, and these sorts of elements. Um, and then I've also been looking at inclination and changes in philosophy um, of both of philosophies of education. So the 1960s, there were a lot of people who were interested in kind of new new ideals in education and the progressive movement and then um, and then and the, also the philosophy of education and agency so they were interested in providing and taking on that role and now there's and now and then increasingly it's a perception of negative uh, like a negative perception of their alternative options so here we see things like a movement whereby there are more um, children with autism that are being educated at home because parents feel that their needs aren't being met by the school and there's a greater understanding of those. So these elements are informed by broader historical trends and external developments such as the awareness of um, autism, ADHD, um, and also things that impact like legal ability um, and legal acceptability um, and those things. And then there's the pet families decision to um, to exercise their agency to home educate. Um, also, I've been um, considering the government's relationship with home educators. So in England, it's always been legal to um, home educate, and the law describes it as it's the parent's duty to provide, to provide a suitable education for the child, whether at school or otherwise. And that's how education otherwise gets its name, which is the biggest, well, the, one of the first support groups and still the largest. Um, and in Canada, in British Columbia, the government introduced a, um, they started to introduce support for home educators, and this, um, this initially entailed registering, so you had to just write the child's name down, but you would receive some money for, in support. Um, and then, and that was in 1986, and then in the mid-90s, they introduced a programme called Distributed Learning whereby you would sign up, you would enrol in a school, but it was a virtual school and it was called e-busing, electronic busing, whereby the schools, the children would be at home but via the internet corresponding with a school. But then legally the child is then under the authority of a provincial teacher and expected to meet provincial learning outcomes. So while the group and uh, enrolment has grown massively and is so, is so big because there's a lot of money involved, if you enrol your child, you get a thousand, about a thousand dollars per child per year. But if you register, you get a hundred. So that immediately sets you know sets up enrolment often as a more uh, you know enticing option. But people now don't realise that it's an option. So um, there's a quote from one of the British Columbian home educators who's been home educating for a long time. And she claimed, since the 1980s, homeschooling families have had to register. The government gives funds to families, but much more to families who, rather than registering, enrol in DL programmes introduced from the mid-1990s. There are more and more strings attached to DL. Legally in DL, school, children are at school, just not bricks and mortar school. They have a teacher and they have to meet provincial learning objectives. Of course, some families value the support but I worry that the huge growth of DL will erode the ability to register and our freedom. It's already changed what many think homeschooling is. Um, um, similarly, I've been looking at um, the government's relationship to home educators in England, and um, the government wasn't so involved for many years um, in a sort of, I don't know, in an overarching way. There were incidences of local authorities trying to get involved um, in families and um, one woman I met felt very persecuted in the 1970s and had to felt that she had to flee England and went and lived in Scotland um, for a time in a shack and went through huge court battles 
for years and years to be able to home educate her children. Um, since that time, there are many instances, uh, you know, as, as sort of full on as that. Um, but until until recently, when there was um, the Badman report of two years ago, which tried to look at um, home education and was met um, with, yeah, was seen to be quite contentious. Initially, home educators were quite were open to engage with the Badman review, but they rejected um, his conflation of home education with safeguarding concerns. Um, so one English home educator claimed to me. Um, the government want to monitor us and control us now our numbers are growing. They conflate home education with safeguarding when there's no evidence. Some local authorities think they're allowed to ex inspect you, but the law says that the child's education is the duty of the parent. Um, and another from England commented, um, when I asked her about the government, she says the government had moved from tolerance to forgot it was an option to open hostility, becoming in effect a hate campaign. Um, so you can hear that the, the voices really, to me, speak of this, I, that they feel so threatened, um, really. And la two, um, ten days ago, a report came out um, that the government's going to look again, but in terms of support for home education. And that's been, that's, the initial reception of that has been very mixed amongst home education communities um, in England, because some feel that they do want money, and then others feel that they don't want any government involvement whatsoever. Um, so, yeah, I'm looking, yeah, that's sort of where I'm up to, so I'm, yeah, willing to, <laughs> to answer any questions and get feedback. <laughs>